Let's turn to Joshua, the seventh chapter, starting at the twelfth verse. Joshua, the seventh chapter, starting at the twelfth verse. Joshua 7, um, I'm sorry, starting at the second verse. It says, Joshua sent some of his men from Jericho to spy out the town of Ai, east of Bethel, near Beth-Avon. And when they returned, they told Joshua, there's no need for all of us to go up there. It won't take more than two or three thousand men to attack I, since there are so few of them. Don't make all of our people struggle to go up there. It says so approximately three thousand warriors were sent. But they were sound, soundly defeated. The men of I, trying to read and see the script. The men of I chased the Israelites from the town gates as far as the quarries. And they killed about 36 who were retreating down the slope. The Israelites were paralyzed. Listen to this. Paralyzed with fear at this turn of events. And their courage melted away. It says Joshua and the elders of Israel tore their clothing in dismay, threw dust on their heads and bowed face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord until evening. It says then Joshua cried out, "O sovereign Lord, why did you bring us across this Jordan if you are going to let the Amorites kill us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side." Lord, what can I say now that Israel has fled from the enemies? For when the Canaanites and all the other people living in the land hear about it, they will surround us and wipe out our name off the face of the earth. And then, and then what will happen to the honor of your great name? But the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why are you lying on your face like this? Israel has sinned and broken my covenant. They have stolen some of the things that I commanded must be set apart for me. And they lied, not only stolen them, but have lied about it and hidden the things among their own belongings. That is why Israel, the Israelites are running from their enemies in defeat. For now, Israel itself has been set apart for destruction, and I will not remain with you any longer unless you destroy the things among you that were set apart for destruction. The title of my message is Don't Be Greedy. Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. I, I, I watch a, st a, a show and I talked about it on last week called American Greed. Anybody ever seen that? that? Oh, man, it's a reality show, but it's real. American Greed is really uh, an American documentary um, that includes high profile corporate and white collar crimes. People commit them. People like you and I, we commit white collar crimes we commit corporate crimes and they're real crimes that have been committed y'all go back and watch it y'all will be like what it says crimes some of these crimes are like betrayal they're scams they're scams that have taken place over the years and um some of them are i mentioned that on last night uh, last week some of them are ponzi schemes some of them are real estate schemes where they uh, said that, oh, we have, I, I was watching one where this uh, older gentleman uh, paid. This guy came and said, look, I have an oil well and I want, I want to sell it. And he went to this older gentleman to sell him the oil well. And the, and the older gentleman was so excited because this guy had proposed to him that this oil well was worth some odd million dollars. So him and his son go out there and they're excited. Man, we bought this well. We're going to make some money. And they looked up through the, the, the well, the shaft of the well, and the well was empty. There was nothing there. The guy had scammed them out of all of this money. Sometimes it's including bank robbery, robberies. Anybody been a victim of identity theft? 
Okay, no, uh, yes, I, I know a couple have. Identity theft, um, even sometimes embezzlement, it's so easy to take a little bit of money. Ain't nobody going to miss this. You take a little bit more, a little bit more. Next thing you know, you are so deep into embezzling money that it's, it's unreal. Even insurance fraud. Sometimes they're selling you a policy and you think that you got some life insurance and you think that you and you done paid over two hundred thousand dollars and it only to find out that all you have is a piece of paper. American greed, American greed. And I remember when I was working for the government, um, this officer actually this is talking about greed now. Um, this officer literally had his wife killed in the farm fresh parking lot. Because he did not want the mother to take the kid and for him to have to pay child support. Greed. He hired somebody. And he pled innocent all the way up until they brought the man in. And they went and I, I remember that the divers went down and found the gun. And they brought the gun. And when, 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 when he knew the gig was up, he said, you know what? He said, uh, 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 I confess. And let me tell you something, he, I, I, hate to ha I, I hate to say it, but before he got out of jail, the day before he got out of jail, the prisoners beat him and killed him. He said, you killed your wife, we're going to kill you. It's ruthless. So we're talking about, I, I, I love the story, go watch it, American Greed. And what I'm talking about is don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. So let's look at the definition of greed. The definition of greed is an inordinate or insatiable longing for the unneeded excess, especially excess of wealth, status, power, or even food. Uh-oh. My God. Some of us are greedy you know, you go somewhere, especially a buffet, and you know you you know that you are full, but you're like, you know what? I'm gonna go get me another plate. I know last night I cooked some dinner, and I mean it was it was banging, y'all. It was good. Hadn't cooked it, and Pastor Robert was eating, and I said, you know what? I piled my plate up, and by the time I got done, I was so full I could hardly walk. That was greedy. <laughs> That was being greedy. So greed can come in a multitude of ways. And you know, it's just not the rich that are greedy. A lot of times the poor are greedy because they're taking thinking that they're not going to get anything the next day. Yes, you are. Because our father says that he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Do you not know that he's going to take care of you from day to day? He said the birds have nested flying. Look, the dew and the grass. Do you not think I'm not going to take care of you? I take care of the birds. Why not? I'm going to take care of you who is made in my image. So I'm going to tell you again, don't be greedy. And I started researching the average income in the United States of America. The, United, the, the average household income is about $44,000 where you're like, oh, that's not much. But when you think about India, Colombia, Mexico, the range of uh, uh, yearly income, household income is only about $2,500. And they said they live good. Some of it is only $10,000. So you mean to tell me you can't make it off of $44,000? You being greedy. Amen. You being greedy. But let me tell you something. Greed has a cousins. They have cousins. And their cousins is envy and covetousness. Covetousness means that I'm going to keep what I got. I'm not going to give it out. Your, your hands are always like, I'm, I'm always trying to get what you got. I'm always trying to get what you got. And then I'm always envious of what you got. You got a new car, so I'm going to go and get a new car. And no, I can't afford it. Yeah. Envy. Or, or I'm, I'm so envious of you and what you're doing and trying to think about how I can do what I do. But let me share something with you. Greed leads to other sinful behaviors. 
And as we can see in our text with Achan, greed led to other behavior. Greed blinds us to what really is important in life. Family is important in life, but sometimes we can be so greedy and pursuing things, pursuing a better income, pursuing a better car, pursuing a better status in life that we're missing out on spending time with our loved ones. We're so busy working day after day after day. I got to make more money. Well, Lord, you know, I got that light bill. Let God take care of the light, but you still go to work. But don't forsake your family. Don't forsake your loved ones. Spend time with your loved ones. And I was also doing some more research. Six billion dollars. Listen to this. Six billion dollars is spent in the media industry for advertisement. Advertisement. And every day we are bombarded by this advertisement. You got to have this, you know, a, a, a way to get it into our spirit so that greed can start manifesting. And look, it said a typical consumer is receiving 3,000 advertisement daily. Whether it be a billboard, when you drive home, you're going to see a billboard. Whether it be a neon light in a, in a, in a, in a, in a store saying, like Krispy Kreme, hot now, <laughs> advertisement. <laughs> you decide you're going <laughs> to, look, you're going by 7-Eleven and they say two for one. That's advertisement. So every day, 3,000 times a day, we are, are, are being lured into advertisement which is in turn creating something within us that I got to have those hot Krispy Kreme donuts. And I don't even like them. Somebody would say, oh, Pastor, no, nah, no. Nah. But anyway, greed. I needed to give you how greed can slip in. It slips in so easy. But let me tell you about the effects of, uh, of greed. We're going to look at our text on today. The effects of greed. First of all, Greed causes defeat and death. Let's look at uh, verses 4 and 5 of our text. Verses 4 and 5 said, um, so approximately 3,000 warriors were sent, but they were soundly defeated. The men of Ai chased the Israelites from the town as far as the quarries, and they killed about 36 who were retreating down the slope. And the Israelites, listen, I'm not going to get to that verse yes, 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 just yet. Cause defeat. Now, I need to put this scripture in context. Understand that the Israelites had just won the battle of Jericho. They had just marched around the walls of Jericho and the walls of Jericho fell. All of their people and they were able to defeat the city and God said, look, you can go in and take the spoils of Jericho. But he said, look, I'm going to, uh, 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 I want you to go to I, but I don't want you to take anything from I. Everything there is to stay there. And God gave them specific things to take care of. And so the Israelites and Joshua, the people said, look, you know, there's not many people there. We, they, were, they had courage. You ever, you ever had courage? You know what? I, 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 I did this and you know what? I'm good. I can go by. Sure, I can do something less than this. You know, I can, I can, uh, 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 I can go out and, and conquer this. If I can tackle this, this is just a little thing to do. And that's the way the Israelites', Israelites mindset was. They were pumped up with energy. They were pumped up with courage. They were pumped up in their minds saying, you know what, God, you did this for us. And now they come to I and they're saying, look, God, look, Joshua, we don't need all of these people. But then they go to I all pumped up and then they get defeated. 30,000, 3,000, 33 men died. And then that next verse effects of greed. First of all, greed causes death and defeat. 
Greed, number two, causes us to be paralyzed with fear. Look at it at the ending of verse five. Ending of verse five says that the Israelites were what? They were paralyzed with fear at the turn of events and their courage melted away. Melted away. Greed will literally paralyze us. If we let it take control of us, greed will paralyze us. It will cause us to lose courage. And I'm going to explain why. Because of one person, one person caused all of this to happen. And then in verse 7, Joshua goes before the Lord. And verse 7 says that... Um, then Joshua, he cried out to the Lord, oh, sovereign Lord, why did you bring us across the Jordan? Now, God said, all of this land is yours. Now, I showed you what I'm going to do by allowing you to conquer Jericho. And now you're coming to me because you lost 33,000 men and you weren't able to conquer. I, he says, look, why did you bring us across the Jordan River if you are going to let the Amorites kill us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side. Now, here it is. You experience, experience a defeat. And so now you're saying, God, I just should have stayed where I am. I was better off broke. I was better off, you know, staying in a shack. I was better off, God. Why didn't you just leave me there? Why did you just didn't leave me alone? Look, God. So now here we go. It causes greed will cause us to question God. And number two, greed causes God to withdraw his presence. In verse 12, I mean, when I started reading this, I said, man, verse 12, it says that. Um, hold on, I need to. Uh, it says they had stolen but the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why are you lying on your face like this? Israel has sinned. Well, Lord, how do we sin? Sin and broken my covenant. Why? They have stolen some of the things that I commanded must be set apart for me. And they not only have stolen them, but have lied about it. My God. And hidden, hidden the things among their own belongings. That is why the Israelites are running from their enemies and defeat. For now, Israel itself has been set apart for destruction. And I will not remain with you any longer unless you destroy the things. Greed will cause God's presence. To be withdrawn from us. And that last verse said, unless you go and you destroy the things. See, greed will cause you to lie. Greed will cause you to hide. Greed will cause you to, 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 to be like American greed. Like those characters in America will cause you to lie, will cause you to cheat will cause you to do a whole lot of things. But God says, you know what? This is the word. Unless you destroy those things, unless you destroy those things that you seek in so much, that think that you think is going to make you happy. God said, unless you destroy it, my presence can't remain with you any longer. My presence Cannot remain with you any longer. Think about some of those things that, you know what, Lord, I feel like I got to get more of. Think about those things. You know what? You're thinking that your money is supplying your needs, but God is really supplying your needs. Because he said, I will supply all of your needs according to what? According to my riches and glory. So you're thinking about your job is supplying your needs. No, it's God supplying your needs. And so what you need to do is stop trusting and relying in things and begin to seek God and say, God, I trust you no matter what. God, 
I'm going to lean on you. I don't know how I'm going to make it. But God, I'm believing in you. It's not me. It's not within myself. But God, I yield myself to you because I want you to have your way in my life. I want you to have your way in my finances. I want you to have your way in my mind. I want you to have your way in my house. I want you to have your way in my family. Sometimes we're wondering why our family members are not coming to God. It's because of you. Greed. 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 One man. One man caused 33 people to die. One man by the name of Achan. One man caused God to say, I'm going to withdraw my presence from you. One man caused the people to lose courage and hope in what God had already done. One man. It takes one thing in your life to make you to lose courage in God. It takes one thing that happens in your life. Somebody didn't give you what you thought that you would, should receive. One thing. And so you say, God, I give up. God didn't really say what he said. What mean, what mean what he said? He said anyway. One thing. What is that one thing that has caused you to say, God, I just give up? And I'm going to tell you what my one thing was. I'm transparent. When my mama passed away immediately suddenly I was like God you know what I'm wondering if there is a heaven I began to question because I won't there I began to question God did she really go to heaven but the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that you shall be saved see we make it complicated we make it so complicated. So I went months thinking, did mama really make it into heaven? But you know what? It ain't none of my business anyway. It's God's. My mama was just on loan to me. But she went back to the father. She was the father's first before she was ever my mother. So I got greedy and said, Mama, I need you here. That was my greed. Mama, I need you. Mama, I need you to pat me on my hand and say, you know what? You still my baby. I wanted to hear it. But that was greed. Mm, my God. Greed. The Bible says that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Just a little bit of greed will mess up everything. So I'm getting ready to get to my points and then I'm going to close. How? I don't want to tell you about what greed does. But I want to tell you how to conquer and to combat greed. Number one, I want you to understand that greed is a sin. Just call it what it is. It's a sin. And it grieves the heart of God. And going back to, I, uh, to Achan, let me tell you what happened to Achan. Achan, Joshua called everybody together. Achan came before the Lord, and it was so funny. Achan said, look, I saw the beautiful uh, 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 robe from Babylon. I saw the 200 silver coins and a bar of gold weighing more than 1,000 pounds, and I wanted them. We see things and we want them. We see it and we want it. And no doggone well, we can't afford it. Or, there you go, we don't need it. The more we get, the more we want. And let me tell you something. This is nothing against who comes to get food. But you know what? Week in and week after, uh, uh, we do food pantry every Monday. I see the same people coming. No offense. No offense. Some people come and say, you know what? I'm only going to take what I need. But then some people come and they take because they see it. How many of you, and don't say that you have not done it before. You took it because it was there. You knew you didn't need it, but you took it because it was there. You didn't need it, but you took it because it looked good. You didn't need it, but you know what? I could use it at a later date. You didn't need it, but...
But you know what? I, I'm going to take it and I'm going to give it to boo-boo over here. And you know boo-boo never saw it. Greedy. Greed. Greed. So we must understand that greed is a sin and it grieves the heart of God. Understand how the Israelites, God told the Israelites, God told Jacob, because you were greedy, because one man was greedy, I, my heart is broken and I cannot stay with sin and I have to withdraw my presence from you. We got to admit where our areas of greediness is. My area of greediness is not your area of greediness. Sometimes we don't need it. And I'm getting ready to go somewhere here. Sometimes we got people in our life because we're greedy and we don't want to let them go. Oh, they're comfortable. They make me comfortable. You know, and I, and I speak to people who are shacking right now. I speak to people who are fornicating right now. Yeah, I'm going to say it. You don't need, has, is that person supplying all of your needs? No, he's supplying your, or she's supplying your physical needs. But cannot supply the inner need that you're looking for. That's greedy because you're not relying on God to supply all of your needs physically, emotionally, in your heart. So you won't let them go and you're greedy and saying, God, but what God has done, he's removed his presence from you because he's not going to deal in sin. Y'all come on now. But the Bible in Colossians 3, 5, and 6 says, So put to death the sinful nature, the earthly things lurking. There are some things that's lurking in our life, that's lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality. Did I not just say that? Have nothing to do with impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy. For a greedy person is an idolater. When you're greedy and what you are greedy for, you make it an idol. That's what an idolater is. You literally set it up on this table and say, you know what? This right here is going to supply all of my needs. It says, and then you're worshiping the things of this world. Stop worshiping the things of this world. We get so tied to the things of this world. It says, because the anger of these sins, go back and read the sin, the Anger of anger of God is coming to you, to your household. You're wondering why things are not working out. You're wondering why things are not going right. Look at the list of sins. Literally pulling us away from God. God says, I want you to come back to me. Get rid of these things. I want your heart. I said it on last night, God, uh, on last week. God's not interested in your pocketbook. He's interested in your heart. That's what he wants. Number two, be generous and practice contentment. Admit that greed has a pull on your life. And it doesn't have to be money. I want you to understand, ask God, God, what areas am I greedy? Am I greedy in my time? Am I greedy? Where am I greedy at? And whether it's I don't have enough, it says I need this. Sometimes I need it. You don't need it. I'm not like this person. That's being greedy. When you are comparing yourself to someone else and you're saying, God, I wish I was like them. That's being greedy. The Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made you. So stop wishing that you were somebody else. I can't sing like I'm here. God bless her. I do what I can. But God has given it to her and not me. I ain't greedy for it. I ain't upset about it. I ain't trying to be like her. I'm just trying to be who God created me to be. Luke 7 and 38 says, give and you will receive. Your gift, your gift will return to you in full, pressed down shaking together to make room for more. The problem why you don't have what you need is because you ain't giving it away. You ain't being generous. And so God is saying, why do I need to give you more and you still holding on to what you got? You got to make some room sometimes, even in our closets. Oh, Lord, I'm talking about me now. 
Even in my closet, I need to go. I can't wear it, but I keep holding on to it. I'm going to get into this one day. And it's been three years. And I ain't got into it yet. I need to give it away. Or I'm going to get it. No, baby, you don't miss that size. Make room for more. Make room for more. If I bet if I go in my closet and make room for more, somebody going to bless me with more. The amount that you give will determine the amount that you get back. Because you can't give away more than God's going to give you. Proverbs 14 and 30 says, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Jealousy is like cancer in the bones. You being jealous over this person, you don't know what it took for them to get where they are. But you know what? You can be jealous over me if you want to. You, it says, it's like cancer in the bones. It's eating you up. It's tearing you apart. On the inside, you smiling at me, but you know, I, I really wish. I'm jealous of her. Just get rid of the jealousy because it's eating you up. And it says, a heart at peace gives life to the body. Be peaceful in what God has given you. Be content in what God has given you. But envy rots the bones. Be generous and practice contentment. God, I may not have everything that I want, but I'm thankful for what you have given me. I'm not, I may not be where I want to be, but God, I'm thankful for what you, where you have me at right now. God, I may not be able to give like I want to give, but such as I have given, God, I'm going to be obedient to you. It says being generous and practicing contentment. See, when you're content, you're saying, God, I trust you. So I'm not worried about giving because I can't give more than you're going to give me. Being generous. The Bible says 7 to 38 says, give and you will receive. And I already said it, press down, shaking together, running over. And the amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Proverbs uh, says, uh, a peaceful heart leads. To a healthy body. How many in here are sick right now? I know my knee is clicking. Clicking because I need a knee replacement. But my heart needs to be peaceful. Because I'm saying, God, I, 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 I need my body healed. We have to learn. And that's something that we have a problem with as Americans. We will not celebrate the successes of somebody else. Somebody else is doing good. I God, I, I, God bless you, didn't he? But deep down on the inside, you're like, man, I wish I had that. Celebrate the successes of someone else. Celebrate, learn, get in your mind, have an attitude of gratefulness, have an attitude. God, I thank you. And I heard it when Denise got her new car. One of our other partners said, my turn is next, but I'm going to celebrate you right now. You got to understand and put yourself in a position, say, hey, look, I'm going to celebrate you because I know my turn is coming. My turn is coming. And I'm not talking about a faith. You know what? I'm thankful for you. That's fake. Being genuinely thankful. You rejoicing. You shouting with them. Woo! Come on, sis. Let's get a shout going on. Because I'm thanking God for you. Being genuinely happy. And number three, my last point. It says get rid of comparing yourself with others. Stop looking at what others have. Quit keeping score at what others have and what others are doing. What's happening in other people's lives. You don't know what it took for them to get where they are. So get rid of comparing yourself. Get rid of comparing yourself to somebody. If God is moving in their life, you don't know the hell that they went through to get where they are. You don't know the sacrifices that they made to get where they are. You don't know what happened for them to be laying before God with a broken heart and laying before God. And so say, God said, I need to put my anointing on you. And out of that brokenness, out of that hurtness, God in turn anointed them immensely. That's why they're doing what they're doing. Stop comparing yourself. I can't pray like nobody else. We'll pray anyway. I can't read like nobody else. Well, read what you can read. 
quit keeping a score. Let me... uh, uh, Let me get you to understand the reason why the body of Christ, the reason why that people are not coming together and hungry before God is because we're not thankful for what God has placed in each one of you in here. God has placed a specific gifting and a calling in each one of your lives, but you're sitting down on the gift. You're sitting down on the calling. That God has placed on you because you're experiencing low self-esteem. So right now I come against that spirit of low self-esteem. I get rid of that spirit of comparison. I am not like you, but such as I am, I'm going to do what I can. Woo! Don't compare. Galatians 6 and 4 says it. Don't compare yourself with others. Just look at your own work. To see if you have done anything to be proud of. Have anybody done anything to be proud of? Oh my God, I got to settle down. I hear myself tuning up. Have God done anything in your life to be proud of? Many of you, and I'm going to tell on myself again. Many of you have children. Raise your hands if you have children. Seven of them I heard somebody say. Seven of them. Be proud of the seven. Because I couldn't have children. I couldn't have it. The doctors told me that I'm sorry, Miss Spady, but you can't have children. You might as well adopt. There are children over in Ethiopia that you can adopt. And at that time, me and my husband, I didn't want to adopt nobody. I wanted a child. But God... And like my sister back there said, I got so many children right now, I ain't even got enough to take care of them. I got God children. I got great nephews. I got great nieces. I got children. Every time I turn around, somebody's coming and hugging on my legs. Why? God said, you may not have a biological child, but I got children for you that you are going to impart in. My God. The Bible says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and above all else live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow is going to have its worries of its own. Worry about today. Greed. Greed. Greed will mess you up. Focusing on what somebody else. Comparing yourself. And if I can get you one thing today. And my heart is tugging on my heart. Many of you have been comparing yourself to somebody else. Comparing yourself to somebody else. I'm not a size four. So why am I going to compare myself to somebody that's wearing a size 4 and can wear a dress and slam it and make it look cute? I can't get into it. But you wear what God has given you. And what I'm talking about, listen to this. I'm not talking about naturally. You wear what God has given you in the spirit. God has a design just for you. So you stop comparing what somebody else is wearing and you wear what God has given you stop being greedy be greedy for God God I want more of you I want more of you I want a greater revelation of you and I just prayed that to God the other day and I'm going to tell you what I prayed I said God give me a revelation of you And give me a revelation that my mom is okay. I asked him. He will do it. Give me peace and revelation in my heart. That my mom is okay. And that my brother who passed away 11 months after my mother. That they're okay. God I need a greater revelation. See church messes us up. Thinking that things got to be a certain way. Silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus. 
Can I get you to sing that, my sister? As you stand to your feet, think about those things in your life that you need to release. Just close your eyes. moment right now. No. Oh. 